Randall's yearbook. We're skipping a lot of time. Sixth grade to what, 10th grade? Four years, but I mean, I don't have that many. This is pre-internet. Right here is just where the internet's coming up. So now we're at like 2000, um, not 2098. Dial up the internet, we're getting these AOL instant online. Um, I think at the time we, we had moved from Oasis further down Mountain View. So Mountain View, if you go north, it gets nicer. And if you go south, we had just moved across the proverbial train tracks and now we are on the wrong side of the tracks. The other side of the wash, which is like a carrying all the water that comes from the runoff through the desert. Um, it doesn't rain much, but when it rains, it floods everything. So you have this wash that carries the water through town. We lived on the wrong side of that, the wrong side of the train tracks in a cheaper apartment complex. Now we don't have Oasis. We don't have this playground of kids, ghetto kids running around. Now it's just like more poor. And then if you go even further than that, which we eventually moved to, there's the streets where you can't walk down because there's a kid over there who they say has a knife and will steal your shoes. If you go even further than that, now you have gangs and you have real, real stuff going on. Um, so we were getting further away from comfort. Um, what else? 10th grade, 98, the internet. Oh, I brought that up because I said the AOL online. Um, I heard of it and we got some of those, but we didn't have a computer. Um, yeah, not probably not until like the end of high school. I think we had maybe a laptop and it was a work laptop my dad used for business. Pretty sure I crashed it trying to look for porn or something. Um, you're going to hear a phone in the background. We're going to ignore that. Because I am at my parents' house right now doing this. And they still have a landline, which is interesting. I have a landline. I had a landline. When I had an apartment in New York, I had a landline. I don't have a cell phone now, so I actually prefer the landline to the cell phone. So let's see, let's read this Randall Winston. 98, uh, uh, let's see, Redlands High School. David, sup, sup, right, right, woo, woo, chillin' and willin', max and relaxing. you know this, here's your ghetto superstar, AKA Prez, AKA Black Superhero, AKA Malcolm X, Apprentice. Well, this year, David, was pretty fun. Most of the time, it was real cool. I guess you could sum it up in two phrases. Talking about girls with no actual, no actual action, and 007. Why do we play 007 for 48 hours? This summer, I'll find a way to sneak you in my house. You can hide in the basement. Hopefully, we'll work at Kakorian together, so then we can sneak homies in and jack some food. Woo woo. Why does Kelly look so good? P.S. I still want my 50 cents from the movies in ninth grade, Randall. What's interesting about this is Randall was a friend of mine, African American. And um, I met him when I met him, maybe ninth grade, freshman campus. So we had the uh, elementary school, and then we had middle school, seventh and eighth grade, and then we had the ninth grade. Um, Redlands was in the middle of building another high school, Redlands East Valley High. So you have uh, Redlands High School, and then you have Redlands East Valley High. Um, and then also, as kids start going to these other schools, we start matriculating into the same places. So I went to elementary school in Loma Linda, the new elementary school. There are other elementary schools, more, um, as I told you, down Mountain View, more towards the poor neighborhoods or other elementary schools, and also in Redlands, which is the neighboring town, the bigger town, there's other elementary schools up towards the, the Heights, the Sunset, the, the fancy areas too. So all of us are in our little separate circles, and Loma Linda was, I guess, like Loma Linda University and Loma Linda Hospital, which has a Ronald McDonald House and a cancer treatment center and a proton accelerator. It's a, it's a very heavily medical industry. So we had, I guess, Loma Linda and our Bryn Mawr was like solidly like middle class. But then when we went to middle school, now sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, that was at Cope. And Cope was in Redlands, more towards the nice neighborhood. So as we matriculate to these bigger schools, we meet these other kids who had different life experiences, grew up different. Um, Randall lived by Redlands University. So he was solidly middle class. His dad worked for the university, not as a professor, but like I think as an administrator. And I think his mom, I forgot what she did. Maybe she was a teacher. So he was, um, you know, those teacher kids. They're, uh, he was pushed from an early age, really gifted kid, super good at track. Um, and uh, he went to these nice schools. I met him at... Not nice schools, but um, you know, the Redlands stuff that I wasn't used to. So I met him at this freshman campus where like, seventh and eighth grade we went to the uh, middle school. And then before they opened up that other high school, they had this campus, this middle school that they just turned into ninth grade. So it was like a catch year, like 
after that, half the kids went to the East Valley High, half the kids went to Redlands High School. But for seventh and eighth grade, we went to middle school. And then for ninth grade, we had this group of kids who like, it was only a ninth grade campus. So our ninth grade was really rare compared to a lot because usually you have in high school, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. But until they built that high school, they had like this holding period where like all these kids were at this ninth grade campus. So we all hung out, whereas like after that year, half of us went to one high school, half of us went to the other. So we got this campus of all ninth graders and it was awesome because it was like, instead of like seventh, eighth grade or even elementary school or even high school, we only had one year at this campus. So all of us were the same age. So that's where me and this kid bonded, Randall, and then both of us went to Redlands High School. So this is a year after that. So that's why he said, the movies in ninth grade, that's when we kind of hung out. We had a couple classes together. I was always in all these advanced classes. Even when I got bad grades, I still got into the advanced classes, which is cool. So um, I just didn't do my homework. But my parents were still pushing me for like, not pushing me, but like, they were really good at trying to make sure that we were getting those advanced classes. But then I think around like 10th or 11th, my dad was like, look, if you don't like high school, don't worry about it. If it's not your thing, but like, kind of took the pressure off. But I was still trying to, trying to make a, an effort to get into these advanced classes. And then I would get in and I'd do the work, get my grades, be like, all right, do I like school? What is this all about? Oh, it's also because intellectual curiosity, because that's where you got the real knowledge. It's like an AP Euro, AP US history. That's really in the economics classes is where we got like decent instruction. Whereas I only, I didn't go to them, so I don't even know how the normal history classes were, but I had friends who did. You know, I had friends who were in the advanced classes and friends who were in the normal classes. And the normal class friends would show me their homework and it was, it was a bunch of like rote memorization of dates and no context and it was ridiculous. So like, yeah, the advanced classes at least, it might've been boring and I didn't do homework and school wasn't my thing, but at least it wasn't a complete waste of my time. At least I could, I think in my economics class, I read the textbook on my own. I didn't like the class, I didn't like the teacher, but the textbook was a lot better than the textbook in the normal class. So Randall was one of my advanced classes friends. Uh, Randall, if you look him up, he is studying for his law degree right now in Berkeley. He worked for the office of the governor of California, I think, or something. But he's a hot shot. He's always been a hot shot. So back then he was, um, that's why I put him in here too. Just these people who like, we're all on these paths. Like I said, we were in the elementary school. We go to the middle school and then we go to the high schools and then we go off to college. But like these kids grew up together and then we go off into our own paths, which what I'm um, thinking about right now is like culture and how is culture propagated? How are we subsumed into the dominant narrative? And then you have like creatives or like, like um, others like me, like um, I never really fit in, but then I didn't fit in with like the drug guys or the um, nerd guys or the college path guys. And that's why I went in the army really. It's like, I'm not going to go into college. I don't like these guys. So let me just do something different. But um, how does that happen? And it's funny now that I'm 36 and this is, you know, I graduated high school half my life ago. It's like we were all together and then we spread apart and then when we come back and check in on each other. And that's why I put Randall in here because Randall definitely went that normal political track. I've been watching it for 18 years every now and then when you Google your little high school friends. He was the um, YMCA, I think it's governor of the state, but there's one of them for every state and the YMCA is a huge organization. So Randall ran for that I think when, after this, maybe 11th grade or 12th grade, and he told me when he won it, he won it statewide. So Randall Winston, like, they, he had to run against all the other people involved with all the other YMCAs across California, which is, you know, the biggest state by population, I think, in the union, over 30 million people. And so I think the guys told him, all right, where do you want to go to college? Because you pretty much, you wrote your ticket. So he was heavily involved in that. Um, what else did I do? Me and Randall, he took me to the Rotary Club once, so he was heavily involved in the community stuff in our city, and I just remember it's like black kid, Mexican kid, and a bunch of white people in the room, and I feel comfortable. And it's not necessarily a racing, it's just you just feel something like, Redlands is a really white town, and when you have a little bit of color, and when people consistently ask where you're from, where are you from? And I'm like, California, I'm from Loma Linda. No, they want to know about your family, and you just get tired of answering that question. So. Um, same thing with the military. When you ask a soldier, what'd you do? It's like, it's kind of a rude question. It's like, what? He can entertain you or he can bring up trauma. And it's like, why do you want the chance to make someone uncomfortable? So those types of things you learn to handle with a little bit more tact. Um, you definitely don't ask soldiers if they've ever killed anyone. But, um, so the same thing with race. It's like, but I'm not, again, it's not like people wanted to make me feel uncomfortable. It's not like I was uncomfortable. But I did notice that within this context of this town, there's a predominance of this culture. 
which I'm not a part of. And because of that, uh, people recognize me as an anomaly and then are curious about it. That's all. And then you mess with them. You're like, so when they say where you're from or what's your background, you just don't give them a straight answer. You're like, I don't know. What did I say? I think I, I usually, my most often one was like, my dad's Irish, my mom's Mexican, I come out looking Arabic. It's like when blue and yellow mix, they make green. Stuff like that. You learn, that's what it is. Um, you learn it if you have like a mouth on you. You learn to handle um, discomfort with uh, being a smart ass. Um, Randall was always claimed to be the, we always told him he's gonna be the first black president. Obama kind of fucked that up, but uh, yeah, Randall was our class president. He was that YMCA president of the of the whole state, and now he um, apparently is going to get his law degree, and I think he's going to run for office eventually. So, Randall, you will have to answer to this now: Who is Kelly, and why are you talking about her looking so good? Now, me and Randall would sit on my wall. At this time, we moved further into the bad neighborhood, but my parents were pretty good at finding us a good spot, and so they found us a house with a pool. So it was a little bit deeper into the bad neighborhood where I remember when we would go to the bus stop. There was a little bit of action that could have involved me. I always found a way to keep my nose clean. There's this kid, State Street, State Street, and Loma Linda. He was like, he came up to me once when we were at the bus stop, and he was like, hey, David, you think I could beat you up? I kind of looked at him, because I knew him since he was fifth grade. And so now we're like, this is five years later, maybe. So you all know of each other when you grow up. I was like, nah. And I just kind of looked at him, and like, he just kind of looked at me. I was like, all right, I passed his test. I guess I'm not worth the effort. And he's a cool dude. I, not, I don't know about cool dude, but I ran into him when I was an adult later on, he was gang banging, and we let him stay in our house because he was hiding from some people. So he got, he was on that path and he stayed in that path and who knows if he got out of it, but that was, that was the neighborhood. So you just, you stay away from that area and don't walk down those streets. But Randall definitely wasn't a part of that life, living by the university, but he would come over to my house and um, we, because I had the pool and, well he had a pool too, and um, we'd sit on the wall, I remember talking about the girls that we had crushes on, but we didn't have any skills or any ability to, the dog who chases the car but doesn't know what he's gonna do when he finds it. So Kelly is probably one of those girls. Um, I think Randall actually did take one of those girls to prom, so he figured it out. But he figured it out after not hanging out with me. I think after 10th or 11th grade, he um, started hanging out with the drama people, the ASB people more. I wasn't on a college track, so I was probably a bad influence. Pretty much stuck to myself. I had my friends like, yeah, so like Randall was my friend, so he was the class president dude, so like I knew that dude, but like we, we grew distant, and then, um, yeah, because when you're younger, you don't care so much about that social stuff, but when you get older, it becomes more important, so this is like that beginning of that break, like after this, the next year, me and Randall didn't really hang out, you could tell, so in ninth grade, we went to the movies, he's talking about sneaking me into his house, because I wanted to, you notice when you're younger, and your friends who have more stuff than you, you just want to, you'd rather stay at their place than your place, so his whole thing about me stick, sneaking into his house, I'm pretty sure I was always trying to sneak into his house. I was like, yo, just let me crash at your house. Or like, sleepovers, don't ask your parents, just sneak me in. Um, I had a crush on his sister. She was a year older, and nothing ever came of it. I don't even think, like, I, I just would talk to her, but like, she was like, we had a vibe. So I just like staying over at his place, um, listening to Tupac. I was like, that real, like, street knowledge that we don't get. I'm definitely, like, in Randall's neighborhood, you don't get. Um, and so we listen to hip hop. Um, the Malcolm X thing. I think I'm pretty sure he read the autobiography I did too. Idealistic, you know. Um, Kirk Horan was a movie theater. We, um, yeah. So he was looking for a job. I don't think I ever got a job. I got like something trying to get people to sign up for newspaper subscriptions door to door. But it was more of a hustle where you just if they give you any money, you keep it. You do sign up the people who signed up for subscriptions, but it's more about begging money door to door. So that was until the army. I never really had a job. Job. I thought that was silly. But I'm pretty sure, like, the normal high school thing is you get the part-time job, you know, learn responsibility, blah, blah, blah. I was always just, like, doing my own thing. Just I guess I always thought I was too good for that. Uh, what else? Super, black superhero, yeah. Yeah, so we were really idealistic, really um, horny, or just f trying to figure out girls, talking about who's, like, the prettiest. And then something I noticed also, what I, I've learned growing up, is that we, um, cultural... Uh, modeling is we thought all the little white girls were pretty and they were cute but like looking back there are other cute girls too but like you got this like mind state that like just this dominance culture which influences the young people if you only see like on your movies and TVs and magazines a certain type of beauty then like I was a little judgmental asshole thinking girls were you know fat when they weren't and just like your, your, your framework of beauty is so small 
And when you actually get the, um, the blessing of stripping your clothes off in front of another human being and not getting any judgment and realizing that like this hair isn't like an issue for someone who wants to share their body with me or my body size, you know, I, I work out and I'm in shape because I like having a functioning meat bag to walk through this world with, but like as far as impressing another person, and it's nice to be attractive, but like you have a lot more forgiveness, um, you know, and like stretch marks and like cellulite and blah, 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 and like you realize skin is soft and you know, and, and then a, a, a warm heart is comforting and like another soul which um, is shared with you is like a, it's like love is a miracle. All these like, there's, there's a romantic human way to look at interactions, but when you're young, well, this is just what I've, still working on right now trying to like figure out the framework of what I believe now and then where it came from I just recognized I was a little bit judgmental why does Kelly look so good Kelly was just like some blonde girl in our school I'm pretty sure but like there's these other girls I recognized back then who kind of maybe were into me but I just they weren't on my radar because they didn't fit, fit this narrow view of beauty that I had back then and I know because I had the stack of playboy that I got from my cousin he stopped his subscription because he was outgrowing it and then he gave it to my other cousin and then they weren't going to give it to me but I snuck into the house and just took it because I heard about it and I was like shit that's my inheritance you're not going to steal that from me and I would just look at the playboys and the girls in my high school didn't look like the playboys and it's like I was just like I didn't get over that until I didn't have a girlfriend in high school I uh, I didn't I didn't have any um did I kiss anyone yeah I lost my virginity at 19 after when I was in the army and came back but no, I, you know what, I talked like that, but then like I lost my virginity to this like half black girl who definitely wasn't the standard of beauty. But um, I just have noticed that my appetite has broadened and I'm a lot more omnivor omniv omnivorous. I'm an omnivore. Whereas like um, I, I thought until I tried different body types and different types of people and like make skin and white, and black, um, you just, when you, when you think you have a type, I think that's a fallacy. I think humans are humans, and human connection is just special no matter in what form. Even, you know, guy, girl, whatever. Sometimes I joke around that there's a good male romance in my life just waiting for me. But like, um, love is love. And um, back then, talking to Randall, I realized that we had a very narrow definition of what was, of aesthetics and only through experience and living and, and, and meeting other people and traveling and um, yeah do you open that up and you know um, realize that a lot of that is judgment and projection and I, I also talking to young guys like I've, now that I'm in my 30s talking to guys in their 20s and um, yeah just realizing that their their perception like now you have the internet and all this other stuff of these Instagram girls looking a certain way and like they're raised on this and like so they think, like this kid from Orange County, and he's like 22, and he's like showing his girlfriend in his pictures, and I'm like, they're all one type of beauty. And I'm like, dude, that's like, like they think that there's like a zero to 10, and their girls are a 10. It's like, you don't even know, man, because like, there are 10s where you wouldn't even believe. Like, you know, a 10 could be a smile, and that just makes the whole look. A 10 could be style. Like if a girl isn't your standard beauty, but she has confidence and style and charisma, you won't even realize how much, like, as I'm allowing your heart to be a little bit more open you you can fall for a lot of different things that you wouldn't even um, think were your type and that's just my advice I try to give to people just sincerity goes a long way confidence goes a long way whatever you have rock it that's what's helped me too a lot of also the other way around a lot of um, women have told me that I'm not their type I'm the first hairy dude or like the first Mexican they've been with her, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you know, lesbians. I have a couple lesbians telling me, oh, I've never been with a guy before, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not like I'm trying to get with them, but you just, you have a connection, a connection's a connection. And then, yeah, and um, it doesn't do anyone good to come to life with a predetermined framework. Um, have an open mind, be sincere. Those are the only rules to love. And then everything else is just an organic process. And here is evidence of us when we were young trying to figure stuff out. Play 007 for 48 hours. Yeah, video games. And now the video games are so much better than what we had. I can't even imagine your guys' temptation. It's like there's always like real life, and then there's cooped up at home watching MTV playing video. MTV's gone to shit, but you have the internet now instead of that, and YouTube and stuff.
but there'd always be that like real life experience. It's like get out and experience life, and we go out and play and do stuff. And so that's why he's like, why do we play 007 for 48 hours? Because like we feel bad. We're like, let's get out. Let's go do something. And we do something. We played. We had our adventures. And I think Randall's married now. I should work, I should look him up. I do. I use on my Facebook. This is a part of that. A part of me reconciling my past, going through the whole narrative from the beginning to the to the current, which is what we're doing. This is long enough.